Hello everybody! Two years ago I was lucky enough to attend the European launch of the new Yaris GRMN in Barcelona with Toyota UK and Toyota Europe. Now, that was an incredibly exciting and new car for the company. It was the European debut of the Gazoo Racing brand, something we've come to see a little bit more of in recent years. It was a very exciting thing to drive and indeed everybody who got behind the wheel seemed to love it. However, with a very high price tag, even with limited availability on its side, it simply failed to find buyers in the European marketplace. Indeed, there are still a couple of them sat for sale in dealerships with delivery miles on. Now, any normal car company would see that as a great failure and they would decide never to try such a thing ever again. Luckily, Toyota is not that kind of company and so I am very glad to say that the hot Yaris is back and oh my, they've really gone to town on this one. I present to you the all-new GR Yaris, and I firmly believe that this is one of the most important and exciting cars to come out of Japan in the last couple of decades. You see, unlike the GR Supra or the GT86, this car is Toyota pure and simple. It's even built in the very same factory that constructed the legendary Lexus LFA. As an owner of a Celica GT4, I thought that homologation rally specials had been consigned to the history books. After all, they are very expensive to build and the potential audience is relatively small. No normal, profit-obsessed car company would ever even think of creating one. But I am very, very happy on this occasion to be wrong. With an asking price of £30,000 for the base model, it's already a lot more expensive than the old GRMN. So what is it that makes the GR quite so special? The entire body shell is unique. In fact, the only carryover parts from the regular Yaris are the headlights, wing mirrors, the tail lights, and the shark's fin antenna on the roof. This thing is lower, it's wider, and it's longer than the normal car. The chassis is made up of a mixture of different models. The front is essentially a normal Yaris, but the rear is more closely related to a Corolla. The roof is carbon fiber. There are aluminum panels everywhere. And in fact, because of the way rally regulations work, even the doors and the tailgate are the exact same as you'll find on a real WRC car. Up front, you have the most powerful three-cylinder engine currently in production. 1.6 litres, turbocharged and making 257 horsepower and 265 pound-feet of torque. The only transmission option is a six-speed manual, and that is connected to Toyota's first original all-wheel drive system in over two decades. It's a very clever setup with variable torque distribution, and in this circuit pack car, it even has locking differentials front and rear. The battery has been moved to the rear in the interest of weight distribution and to give Toyota to the space for this enormous air filter, which displaces more than 10 litres on its own. Now, I don't know if that's a lot for an air filter, but it looks massive. And for once, all this talk of lightweight materials and dedication has actually paid off, because this car clocks in at only 1,280 kilos. Now, that's about 150 kilos lighter than my old GT4. That's seriously impressive when you consider all the weight that has to be added to a car like this in order to meet modern crash and emissions regulations. If Toyota told me they weren't actually making any money on these at £30,000, I would believe them. If there were a weak link in this car, it would be the interior. Now, there are plenty of GR-specific touches. The seats, the steering wheel, the gear lever, which sits 50 millimeters higher to be in a better position, and the pedals, which have been set up perfectly for heel and toe, or so they tell me. However, the overall feeling isn't of particularly high quality, but I can't count that against it. Everything that you touch and use in here is solid enough. It's not a bad place to be. It's just not particularly special. One of the biggest problems that the GR Yaris is going to face is what you actually compare it with. After all, I don't believe there is another car currently on sale which can really compete with this toe-to-toe. -to -toe. All the cars that Toyota were talking about were either a lot cheaper or from the segment above, C-sector cars, something like the Honda Civic Type R. Now, on paper, the Yaris might deliver similar performance, but you have to remember, the Honda is basically a TARDIS inside. It's huge, loads of space in the back seat and the boot, and the Yaris doesn't really do well on either of those fronts. So buyers for this are going to have to really, really want a performance car at the cost of some practicality. Here in the UK, you can have your GR Yaris in one of three ways. You can get the base car for 29995 or you can get one of two packs, but you cannot, unfortunately, mix and match. You can get the convenience pack at just over £32,000, and that brings with it a few more luxury features. So you get sat-nav, you get heads-up display, and you get a better sound system or for just over £33,000, you can have the circuit pack. And that is what Toyota expect the majority of customers to go for. And for that very reason, 
all of the cars on the press fleet at the minute are circuit pack cars like this one. Now, what do you get for your extra money? You get these beautiful BBS forged alloys. You get Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires in place of the regular Dunlops. And you also get red painted calipers. Incidentally, the brakes themselves are the same across the range. And at the front, they're bigger than you'll find on GR Supra. You also get the all-important locking differentials, both front and rear, and you'll also get suspension tuned specifically for circuit pack cars. That is the most hardcore variant and is supposed to be the most exciting one of all to drive. Now, as a GT4 owner, I am really, really excited by the prospect of this car, and I truly hope Toyota haven't screwed it up. So let's find out. So did they screw it up then? Nah. <laughs> this car's an absolute riot. Even in normal mode, this car is an absolute hoot and it is certainly not lacking for pace. Now there may be a little bit of turbo lag, but here in this particular car, I can find a level of forgiveness that I otherwise would struggle to. That's for a couple of reasons. It is giving me pretty good performance when you consider that it's only a little 1.6 three pot up front. Secondly, that's kind of part of the old school rally car character, isn't it? The weighting in the controls is really nice too, and the pedals are sort of so-so, but the gearbox is an absolute delight. You can work through the ratios really swiftly and easily without any hesitation. You can indeed heel and toe. If you don't want to do that, you can let the car do it as well. If you press the little IMT button down here, it'll rev match for you on both up and down shifts. Steering is really nice. Just the right amount of weight gives you confidence, lets you know exactly how much you're pushing on. A road like this is exactly the sort of place that a car like this wants to be, and it loves it. The engine pulls pretty strongly all the way to its 7,000 RPM red line, and it really does feel like something which is doing its very best. Many modern turbo units I drive and they feel like they're being held back. This one, not so much. Now the damping is firm, and I was concerned with the circuit pack, it might be perhaps too firm for UK roads. This being a Japanese car after all, and their surfaces being notoriously glassy and perfect. But I have to say actually, it does kind of work. I'm not sure I'd want this as a daily driver, but you certainly can tolerate it. It's not crashy at all, more supple than you might expect. The all-wheel drive system is controlled by a simple rotary dial down here. By default, you have a 60-40 front-rear split. In track mode, it's a straight 50-50. But in sport mode, it's 30-70. Yep, 30% front, 70% rear. Let's see what that's like, shall we? sport mode and you really want to press on you'll find that it has a surprising character it will begin to pivot and move around you feels like the car is attached to your hips in the corners really quite an amazing experience it feels actually perhaps a little less like my old Celica and more like the Lancia Delta Integrale Evo 2 that I drove not too long ago It strikes a nice balance actually between being very competent, it can get you from A to B pretty rapidly, but it'll still involve you in the process. However, it isn't a perfect car. There are some issues with it, and let me run you through those. The driving position, you sat far too high. I really feel like I'm on top of the cockpit here, and I would like to be just a little bit lower. These seats are okay, but not excellent. If my memory serves, I think the units in the old GRMN were actually a little bit better. I'd want something more sculpted, more serious in a car like this. The sound out of the engine too, albeit not really Toyota's fault here, isn't very exciting either. It's functional and it's not something that I'd like to listen to for any long period. Can't complain at its pace though, and it pulls very keenly from fairly low down. 
Now it's geared pretty sensibly on the motorway you're going to be doing around about 3,000 RPM and it's still got some torque even in sixth. Fuel economy I would say is also not a strong point. If you're used to perhaps more ordinary hatchbacks this might come as a shock. This morning I set the trip computer before I did the hour long drive to get here and that was all pretty sensible stuff. I achieved only 33 to the gallon. One other issue I have with the car is that because the windscreen is so steeply raked, the rear view mirror takes up a worrying amount of your forward visibility. I also don't like the fact that you don't even get sat nav in either the base or circuit pack car. For £33,000, to have a nav button here which doesn't actually do anything is very frustrating. Now admittedly you do have Android Auto and presumably also Apple CarPlay and I'm sure that's what most people are going to use, but considering it's probably a software thing that Toyota can just turn on, it seems a little bit stingy to have that off in a £30,000 car. You wonder how a car like this could possibly continue the spirit of something like the old GT4 in the tidal wave of regulations and requirements that modern cars have. I am very pleased to say that the spirit of the old Celica is alive and well in here. In all honesty, the Yaris makes the old Celica look like pretty poor value. It had nowhere near the amount of mechanical changes as the new car, and in 1996 the old GT4 still retailed at £30,000, the equivalent of £56,000 grand today. But the Yaris, I think, will struggle for buyers, and the reasoning behind that is purely financial. The Fiesta ST is a much more practical proposition, it's still quick enough for most young drivers, and the used market is already flooded with cheap examples. And above the Yaris, you've got companies like BMW pushing cars such as the M2 Competition and M135i with incredibly aggressive finance deals. Toyota is selling the Yaris using a headline figure of finance at about £329 a month, but that's with a deposit of over £7,000, far more than I tend to see for cars in this segment. And that means that on paper, I think it is going to struggle. You want something to put a smile on your face? This is it. And as a piece of engineering, this really is a very special car. Brakes are pretty good too. You very, very quickly get on board with what it can and can't do. Which is just as well, because the nature of press launches these days means that we don't have as long as we often might. Nor do we have the venues that we typically would. But I'm very glad for that, because normally we would be driving this car in Barcelona, Saint-Tropez, or something along those lines. And for you, as a UK buyer, I'm not sure that really means an awful lot, because you're highly unlikely to be taking something like this down to the south of France. You're more likely to live somewhere like here. And if you do, and you're a petrol head, and you want something reasonably special, the GR Yaris is not a bad shout. They've told us that the first year's allocation is almost sold out, and they're never going to be bringing an awful lot of these cars to the country. Their plan for next year is to shift a thousand units. The real tragedy is that the entire purpose for this car's being as a homologation special may have all been for nothing, because with COVID looming, rally regulations have changed a bit, and so the cars that were going to be raced next year now won't. In fact, they may never get raced. Somewhere in a showroom is a very, very fruity version of this car, raring to go, and it's possible that it might never, ever see service. Now some companies, knowing that, might have decided to just abandon plans to produce this thing entirely. I'm very glad Akio Toyoda is not the kind of person to do that. Incidentally, if you wonder why I mention his name and never the names of other car company chairs, look him up. He's a proper petrol head. We need more people like him in the industry. If back seats and boot space are important to you, well, I am afraid you will have to look elsewhere. But if what you're looking for is a car that's fun, quirky, and genuinely special, get one of these. Don't think about it, just do it. Anyway, that's enough from me. Hope you've enjoyed this first drive of the all new Toyota GR Yaris. Thanks to Toyota for inviting me down to have a go. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you all for the next one. Bye bye.